This video from the International Symposium on Circuits and Systems 2021 describes work done in our Integrated Systems Lab at the University of Toronto, optimizing wireline communication links for their best performance. Although the use of error control codes in such links boosts their performance, they also make it difficult to optimize all the transceiver settings. So in this presentation, you'll see how easily observed performance metrics can actually be misleading, causing many modern links to operate suboptimally. As we push these limits to their physical limits, we really can't afford any of these inefficiencies. So I think this work's really important and going to be increasingly so. It's presented by Ming Yang, who did this work as part of his PhD here at ISL. Welcome to EastCast 2021. The topic of our presentation today is prefect and postfect bit rate as criteria for optimizing wireline transceivers. To begin with, here is a general outline of our presentation. First, we would like to spend a couple of minutes discussing the motivation of this work. We need to discuss why post-fact bit rate is an important metric for optimizing wireline transceivers. In the next section, we will introduce the transceiver model we developed that is able to capture both FFE noise amplification and DFE error propagation. In section three, we will present a set of simulation results showing the impact of varying FFE and DFE tap weights on prefect and post-fact bit rate. We will also include the discussion about one hour one plus C decoding in section four, which is currently part of the industrial standard in long range 30 systems to eliminate burst errors. Finally, conclusion will be drawn in section five. Fit for equalizer and decision feedback equalizer are two of the most common receiver DSP blocks. The main downside for FFE is noise amplification due to correlated noise samples. Compared to decision feedback equalizers, since there's no feedback decision loop in FFE, achieving high speed operation is easier and there's no error propagation. For decision feedback equalizers, here we have example of NTAP DFE. The current symbol detection is made based on the results from the past N symbol detections. Therefore, an error decision may actually propagate through the feedback loop, thus increase the bit error rate. In addition, unlike FFE, the critical feedback pass in DFE also imposes a timing constraint limiting the maximum operating speed. However, DFE operation relies on the slicer making hard decisions for each symbol. Therefore, noise is not amplified by this nonlinear feedback operation. In addition, four error correction codes have also become an integral part of DSP. Standard FAT codes include read solemn codes are used to mitigate both random errors and DFE error propagation. There are three popular performance metrics for optimizing equalizer coefficients in wireline transceivers. The first one is the signal to noise ratio, which is also implicitly the optimization criteria when using LMS adaptation to find FFE coefficients. The second one is the prefect bit error rate, which is the row bit error rate before corrected by four error correction codes. Lastly, we have the post-fact bit error rate, which we ultimately care about in wireline system design. On the side, we have a table comparing these three metrics. Since SNR is applied to the quantizer input, only FFE noise amplification is considered, while DFE error propagation and burst errors are not included. Next, we have the prefect error rate measured at DFE output, but before FAC. As such, it does consider DFE error propagation, but it is not sensitive to long burst errors at very low bit error rate. Lastly, Post-fact bit error rate is the fact corrected bit error rate at the final output node, which is able to address all three issues listed in the table. FFE and DFE tap coefficients are typically optimized to maximize, to maximize signal to noise ratio or to minimize the mean square error or prefect bit error rate. Equalizer parameters found by conventional methods do not necessarily minimize post-fact bit error rate. This paper will present an accurate and efficient methodology for finding the impact of wireline transceiver parameters, such as equalizer coefficients, based on post-fact bit error rate. Next, we will discuss our wireline transceiver model. We will first provide a brief system overview and explain how DFE error propagation is being considered in the model. Here we have the schematic diagram of our transceiver model on the left. A transmitter, we have the TX FFE and driver, and a receiver end, we assume a CTLE as an analog front end, 
where the sample CTLV output is further processed by FFE and DFE using DSP. The physical channel has its own channel pulse response denoted by HC, and we can take one step further to generate an equalized channel by convolving the physical channel's pulse response with the impulse response of other components in link, such as the TXFFE, driver, RX CTLE, and FFE. To simplify the problem, we also assume additive white Gaussian noise as the CTLE input, while it will actually still create correlated noise samples after CTLE filtering. In the paper, we presented the methodology to properly consider CTLE noise filtering and FFE noise enhancement. Here, we would also like to very briefly introduce the idea on how DFER propagation is being considered in pulse factory calculation. Here we have an example of a two-type DFE. The assumption is that the two registers in the DFE feedback loop can store two outcomes. One is that a correct decision is made by the DFE and the other one not. Therefore, the two-type DFE model can be represented by a four-state Markov model as shown in the middle. By time enrolling this Markov model, we can actually generate the PAM trellis as shown on the right-hand side of this page. We can then apply trellis dynamic programming to the PAM trellis and efficiently collect all error patterns that would contribute to post fact binary rate. Note that we have introduced our transceiver model that is able to consider both CTLE noise filtering, FFE noise amplification, and DFE error propagation. We then apply this model to generate a set of simulation results to study the impact of varying FFE and DFE top coefficients on prefect and pulse fact bit rate. First of all, a detailed explanation on the link setup is shown here. We use a channel model with 30 dB insertion loss for a link communicating four pan symbols at 56 gigabytes per second, subject to 0.5 volt peak to peak swing at transmitter. Also, we use a simplified CTLE model providing 12 dB picking gain with 0 dB gain at DC. There is no TXFR equalization. At receiver, we have a one tap DFE and a seven tap FE with two precursor and four pulse cursor tabs. The pulse factor rate is calculated assuming the standard KP4 resolvement 544, 514, 15 code. Here we're showing the prefect and pulse factor rate performance surface by sweeping the only DFE tab and the first FFE pulse cursor tab. We're seeing vastly different optimal points on each performance surface. The table on the side summarizes the optimal beta rate found by prefect optimization and pulse fact optimization, and it shows a significant improvement on pulse fact beta rate using pulse fact optimization. As we can see, although the prefect bit rate based on pulse fact bit optimization is one order of magnitude worse than the result found by prefect bit rate optimization, but the pulse fact bit rate found by pulse fact optimization is actually 23 orders of magnitude better. On the prefect bit rate performance surface, the optimal prefect bit rate is achieved with a large DFE tap weight and also a large and positive at first FFE pulse cursor tap. This suggests that FFE is reducing the CTLE filter noise through positive tap weights, thus minimizes the prefect beta rate. On the pulse fact performance surface, the optimal pulse fact beta rate is achieved with a much smaller DFE tap weight to minimize DFE over error propagation. The vastly different optimal points presents a trade-off between FFE noise amplification and DFE error propagation. Here, we're showing more extensive simulation results using six measure channel responses to validate our methodology using pulse fact bit rate. In addition, we also consider a more realistic transceiver setup by considering TX now has a two type FFE providing 5 dB frame emphasis, and RX FFE now has 15 tabs, including three precursor tabs and 11 pulse cursor tabs. Also, we adopted an ACE order CTLU model and apply it to equalize all six channels having 30 to 40 dB insertion loss. The equalized pulse responses, including TXFFE, CTLE, and the physical channel, are tabulated in Table 1 of the paper. 
On this page, we provide both the prefect bit rate and the postfect bit rate as a function of DFE type with C1 for the 36 dB channel case. For each value of DFE type with C1, all other equalizer type widths are re-optimized. Thus, when the DFE type width is lower, the FFE is being relied on to perform more equalization. The plot on the left is simulated with 1.62 mV RMS integrated noise level and 2.42 mV RMS for the plot on the right hand side. And then we use blue and red color to represent simulation results at these two noise levels. The curves with asterisk marks are the prefect bit rate as a function of DFA tab weight, and the curves with square marks are the postfect bit rate plots. In both figures, if we were to optimize based on prefect data rate, we would choose DFE type with C1 to be somewhere around 3.8 to achieve optimal prefect data rate. However, we also find that the postfect data rate are significantly better if we optimize by postfect data rate. For example, in the high noise case, the postfect data rate at the prefect optimal is at 10 to the minus 12 level, while if optimized by postfect, we can have an optimal post-fact bit rate at 10 to the minus 17, which is a five orders of magnitude improvement. We also notice that the post-fact rate is minimized at a lower DFE top width than prefect, which implies a much lower amount of DFE propagation observed at the post-fact optimal. We repeat the same analysis for all six measured channels and plot the post-fact bit rate optimized by prefect and postfect. Here we also use the blue and red curves to represent the simulation results performed at the two different noise levels. As the prefect bit rate does not have the sensitivity to capture DFA error propagation at the very low bit rate levels, it is not surprising to see the optimal postfect bit rate obtained by postfect bit rate optimization is always superior. For example, in the high noise case for a 34 dB loss channel, the post bit rate degrees from 1e minus 30 to 1e minus 14 when the equalizer is optimized for prefect bit rate. Now we have confirmed that the post fact optimized results are different and generally better than the prefect optimized results. We would also like to include 1 over 1 plus CP coding into the discussion. 1 over 1 plus CP coding is a well known technique to mitigate DFA error propagation. Here we have a transceiver model including the 1 over 1 plus CP coder at TX and the decoder at RX. We have an example illustrating how burst arrows can be removed by the precoding. Here we assume a PAM4 link transmitting symbol set 0123 at point TK and the DFE makes a detection error at the second PAM symbol and this error decision propagates across another three PAM4 symbols. By applying precoding, the error value defined by dk minus bk is added to the error value in the previously received symbol, thus they cancel out each other. In this way, any burst error can be reduced to two arrows, one at the beginning of the burst and the other one at the tail. However, another example we show here is the case having an isolated symbol error, which would instead give rise to two consecutive symbol arrows after decoding. We adopt the method proposed in our previous work to accurately calculate the post bit rate subject to precoding. So, in summary, the use of 1 over 1 plus C precoding increases the bit rate when most simple errors arise in isolation, as shown in the example on the right, but will decrease bit rate when the burst errors predominate, as shown on the left. Moreover, since long burst error bursts are eliminated, 1 over 1 plus CP coding improves the performance of the fact, which further improves post-fact bit rate. We still have the same simulation results shown on page 13 using the 36 dB channel case. On top of each figure, we superimpose the post-fact bit rate plot in gray color with precoding turned on. Since the precoding can effectively eliminate burst arrows at large DFE tap weights, now we find the post bit rate with recording is minimized with the same equalizer coefficients. Notice that high DFE tab weights are optimal since they allow for less FFE noise amplification and the resulting error bursts are broken up by the precoding. As a conclusion, using signal to noise ratio or prefect bit rate as performance metrics 
might not be effective in minimizing pulse failure rate when architecting and optimizing wireline transceivers. This is usually because error propagation is not accurately accounted for when SNR or prefabular rate are used. In general, links attain their minimum postfabular rate with equalizer coefficients very different from those that minimize prefabular rate. The introduction of 1 over 1 plus C precoding mitigates the impact of error bursts, ensuring that both prefect and postfabular rate are minimized with the same equalizer coefficients.